Hi everyone. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Caitlin Quigley and I'm a senior at Brunswick High School. Today I want to talk about a bit of a sensitive topic, um, and that's mental health. So let's start up by just taking a few seconds to ask ourselves, how are we feeling today? Go on. What was your response? Did you tell yourself, oh, I'm fine? Or did you start remembering everything that you were planning to do today, allowing your mind to drift off to something else? Well, both of these are pretty typical responses for when people ask us this question. Why might that be, you may ask? Well, this question, just five simple words, requires us to look deep within ourselves, bringing us topics that we don't want to think about or don't want others to know about us. So what do we do? We shrug it off. We respond with, I'm fine. And then we drift to a less sensitive topic. But what if we didn't do that? What if we sit down with ourselves and ponder on this question for just a little while longer? Did you start thinking about the events of the day, of the week? How were you feeling in certain moments? Everything that may have been weighing down on you? Well, this question is a question that I have grown accustomed to asking myself at least a few times a week. And if I'm being honest, most of the time I respond with, I'm not okay today. I feel the weight of the world, every little thing that is just not going well in my life. All this pressure I put on myself, and I come to the conclusion that I just am simply not okay. But it took me a really long time to get to this point, where I can be honest with myself. Does that mean I don't try to hide my inner thoughts and feelings from others? No. <laughs> but it does mean that I'm no longer lying to myself on a daily basis. Now, I know that most of you are pretty tired of talking about the effects of COVID. I mean, we're all just, um, we just, all just want this to be over with. But I think it's a really important thing to bring up, um, especially like how it has affected us mentally. So just bear with me for a little bit. Back in March of last year, at the start of this prolonged quarantine, we were sent home from school, from work, from our daily life with little to no information about what was going on. It started with a two week break, which seemed manageable and finite. That short break turned into staying home for a couple more months until the end of school. Um, we were told that we would still have our summer, so there was still a little bit of hope. But then the lockdown extended and extended. And now over a year later, we are still here, still trying to deal with this mess with the little to no information we have and the ever-changing rules and guidelines that have been incorporated into our lives. As the situation grew worse and worse, we were, le we were left with this diminishing flicker of hope, of this just being over. And even now with the vaccine coming to, out to the public, it is still hard to see an end. The media and the people around us, they tell us to stay positive, that it'll, it'll all be over soon. But how can we keep staying positive, putting on a smile every day, when we can't see the end of this black hole that we were thrown into? And I, I really wish I had an answer for you, but I just simply don't. So instead, I want to tell you about how I have been processing everything, about my struggles and my own mental health, and how I've been working to overcome these obstacles in the hope that you can take some inspiration with you today to start dealing and processing everything that has been happening. So when we were first sent home, I took a bit of an extended break. Spring, I took it as a bit of an extended spring break, not really sure what was happening, um, but knowing that it would end soon and that I would be able to return to my normal life. Honestly, at that time, I was almost grateful that we were sent home. You see, I was supposed to take the SAT about a week after we'd been sent home, and I really wanted to study more for it, but I just couldn't find the time because I was just so busy. So I took it as like a blessing, almost from God, that he was allowing me to have more time to study and prepare for my future. 
Then we were told that we wouldn't be returning to school for the rest of the year. I questioned it, thinking about how everything would work for school and with an online setting. But I didn't sit down and ask myself how everything was affecting me. I just kept telling myself that the end was in sight, that I didn't need to process what was going on because it would be soon uh, it would soon be over. So what's the point? Well, as weeks went by, I found myself losing more and more motivation, not wanting to deal with the state of the world, and therefore not wanting to even complete my daily task for school and even for my extracurricular activities. It got to the point where I just would waste hours on my phone or on my tablet, watching TV, YouTube videos, you name it. I just kept procrastinating, accomplishing anything, and I, until it had to be absolutely done. But, you know, I still had some hope. I still had this idea in my head that after summer was over and everything would calm down, we would return to our daily lives, returning to school, at least part-time in the fall. But once again, I was wrong. However, I tried my best to reset myself so that it wouldn't happen again, um, the procrastination and everything. And I completely reorganized my room and I came up with ways to stay engaged in class, even leaving my camera on, um, big shocker there, for about two weeks of my classes. But then, of course, no one else did and I lost the motivation to do even that, which is simply clicking a button. So I soon fell back into a slump as I felt like I wasn't learning anything all of my classes were too easy, and I felt like I had no one to talk to at school. I had lost all of my friends. So I kept procrastinating, and I just I couldn't do anything about it. So that October and November, I was filling out my college applications, and I finally got to take the SAT. And I, as I was doing so, I didn't feel any excitement surrounding my future. In fact, I was stuck in this state of nothingness, not really sure about how to respond to what was happening around me. I kept telling myself that I was okay because I didn't feel sad and I wasn't bursting into tears every five minutes. But the reality of it was I just wasn't taking the time to process anything. I wasn't allowing myself to grieve situation just kept growing worse and worse as we approached the end of the first semester. And once again, I, turning, I was turning things in late and I was becoming more and more upset with myself for not wanting to do anything and I kept procrastinating. And we got to the end of the semester again and I kept telling myself I just need to get everything done. So I did my best and I tried to turn everything in, but I simply couldn't because I just didn't have the motivation to do anything. So at this point, I had fallen into depression, not feeling anything all the time, constantly looking down on myself and blaming myself for everything that was going wrong in my life, including being in quarantine. I had lost all hope of returning to how things were, and I felt that I couldn't tell anyone about this because I felt my support, my support system had basically gone away. In the midst of feeling all of this, I decided to focus on the things that were consistent in my life, the things I could control. So I would spend hours and hours doing research about skincare and living a healthier lifestyle, trying to gain back some of that motivation that I lost over the course of quarantine. But at the same time, I was just distracting myself from what was happening, still afraid to confront myself about the situation at hand. Not knowing what else to do, I decided to start opening up to a friend of mine about everything during our weekly video calls. She was an excellent listener, by the way, and I will always be thankful for what she has done for me. During one of our calls, she suggested that we started doing a Bible study together. And as soon as she suggested this, I realized just how much distance I had put between myself and God. Like I was just so wrapped up in everything that was going on around me and how I knew that I was lying to myself constantly 
that I just had completely forgotten to take time out for God. So my friend and I started to have more discussions about our mental health, how much it was declining, and how we could start trusting God again. And as we opened up, we both became more honest with ourselves, with each other, and started rebuilding our relationship with God. This was a huge turning point for me because I remembered that I just wasn't alone and that I still had God with me, that I still had the people he had put into my life with me and that there was still hope of everything getting better. But it would take more effort on my part to make it so. And as we progressed into the second semester, I started opening up to myself more, asking myself, the how are you feeling today question. But instead of shrugging it off, and I actually took the time to contemplate it more, and I got to the point of, I'm not okay, and I need help. So I asked my parents to see a therapist, opening up to them about my struggles for the first time in months, that I just, I needed to rebuild my support system. And above all, I found out that I just, I needed someone that I could talk to who could help me think through the process and process everything, who just didn't happen to be like a foot in my life, you know? And after riding this emotional roller coaster for a year, I felt that I was finally in a place where I could build myself up again. Like I realized the problem and I was taking the effort, making um, the plans to move forward with my life. I had made it to the conclusion that it was okay to not be okay. And that by recognizing that I wasn't okay and seeking help, I was able to gain some of that hope that I had lost. I gained it back. I just, I kept asking myself in the question, that daily question every day. And I'm now at a point where there is just sometimes and I can, that I can say, I am okay because I keep taking these steps. Now, it doesn't happen all the time, but when it does, it sure does feel great. I hope by sharing all of this, you can regain some of your lost hope and seek help if you need to. If anything, please remember that the first step in overcoming anything is to recognize what the problem is. At the beginning of all this, if you told yourself that you were fine, and you, I just ask you to revisit this question and take the time out of your day, just five minutes, to truly confront yourself. We need to take the time to process what is happening around us. And by not doing so, we can and most likely will fall into a state of depression, isolating ourselves from everyone and everything around us without even realizing it. Once you've made this confrontation with yourself, try to focus on the things that you can control the things that will help you rebuild your relationship with yourself, others, and with God. For me, it was therapy, catching back up with my friends, and returning to Bible study. But for you, it can be something completely different. No two people are the same. And yet we can learn so much from each other, because we all have similar issues. It is okay to be upset. It is okay to be angry. It's okay to feel stuck, confused, even hurt. It's okay to feel lonely. It's okay to cry. And it's okay to not be okay. <laughs>